Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to look at something that connects scuba divers, submarines and fish as I explore buoyancy. Let's check it out. Buoyancy is the ability or tendency of something to flow in water, air or another fluid. Now to be able to flow in water, air or another fluid, you need to be less dense than what it is you are trying to flow in. I've done a demonstration video previously on density, so I've put a link in the description for you to be able to check that out. This week I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations looking at buoyancy within water. The first demonstration this week is a very simple but effective demonstration of buoyancy called a Cartesian Diver. This is named after René Descartes, who was a philosopher, mathematician and scientist living and working in the 1600s. For this, you will require a plastic bottle filled to the top with water and its cap, a bendy plastic straw, an elastic band, some scissors and some blue tack. First thing I'm going to do to create my Cartesian Diver is cut the straw in half below the bend. Then I'm going to bend the straw around into a U-shape and using the blue tack I'm going to block off one end of the straw. I'm then going to use the elastic band to hold my straw in a U-shape by wrapping it round the two legs of the straw. Once that's done I'm going to put my diver into the top of my bottle of water and put the cap on. The diver should be floating near the top of the bottle of water with just a bend of the straw sticking out through the surface. Now that it's set up, it's time to squeeze the sides of the bottle and watch what happens. You'll notice that to start with my straw is floating near the top of the bottle. When I squeeze the sides of the bottle, the straw goes down all the way through the water to the bottom and when I let go of the sides of the bottle, the straw comes back up to the surface. But what is causing this to happen? Well because my straw is being held in that U shape, there is an air bubble trapped in the bend of the U. Air has density and air is usually less dense than water. However, when I squeeze the sides of the bottle, I am giving the water less space to fill. Water is forced up into the straw and this compresses, that means it squashes in the air that is trapped in that U. There is still the same amount of air there, but it is taking up less space. This makes the air more dense and overall increases the density of the straw. So the straw drops to the bottom of the bottle. When I let go of the sides of the bottle, there is then more space for the water to take up again, so water comes back out the straw, the air bubble gets bigger and that means the straw is now less dense than the water and can float back up to the surface. The next demonstration is slightly more complex than the Cartesian Diver and it shows buoyancy being affected in a similar but slightly different way from the Cartesian Diver. For this you will require a tub full of water, a balloon, an empty glass bottle, some plastic tubing and some strong tape. The first thing I'm going to do is put one end of the plastic tubing inside the balloon and tape this tightly together so that no air or water is able to get in and out round the tape. Next, I'm going to push the balloon and tubing down inside the bottle, leaving a lot of the tubing still sticking out because I'll need this to be able to stick outside of the tub. I'm now going to tape the tubing onto the bottle so that it doesn't float away when it is put inside the tub. Once that's all done, I'm going to put the bottle on its side inside the tub of water and let the bottle fill with water until it sinks to the bottom of the tub. 
Now that it's set up, it's time to blow into the tube and watch what happens. You'll notice that when I put the bottle into the tub, it starts to fill with water and it very quickly sinks to the bottom. When I blow into the tube, the balloon starts to inflate and the bottle rises up through the water until it is floating on the surface. But what is actually causing this to happen? Well, it is actually very similar to what we saw with the Cartesian diver. When I blow into the tube, the balloon inflates and this forces water to leave the bottle. This reduces the density of the bottle and it lifts it up to the surface of the water. This is how fish control where about in the water they swim by using a swim bladder, which they either fill with air or express air out of to control whether they are rising or sinking through the water. This is very similar to how submarines submerge and rise to the surface. When a submarine wants to submerge below the surface of the water, it fills ballast tanks with water. This makes the density of the submarine greater than the water around about it, so it sinks down below the surface. When a submarine wants to rise, it forces air into these ballast tanks. This reduces the density of the submarine and it rises up towards the surface. It's also the same with people when they are scuba diving. To get lower down in the water, scuba divers wear weights around their belts and control their breathing because the more full your lungs are, the higher up in the water you're going to float and as you breathe out, the lower down you are going to sink. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations I've done so far, here to my robot review videos, and here to my new STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring buoyancy.